Ciao everybody, this is Matteo from Milan, Italy. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So, there is a lot going on here, but I decided to take a moment to make this video. It's going to be a super basic video just to have fun, just to play with something. So, I am not a pro about cyanotypes or blueprints. So we are going to um, to develop this beautiful picture on watercolor paper and as you can see it looks like a picture from the 1800s but I swear I made it five minutes ago and I love it, I absolutely love it, it is made on watercolor paper and it is a very fun and fascinating process but before we get to this, there is something really important that I want to tell you. Because, um, as you already know, in my Etsy shop there are many, 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 many faux stamps available. And I decided to make a promotional code um, to give a 40% discount. So the promotional code is Arteo 40 and if you type this um, this promotional code you will get 40% discount and uh, this promotional code uh, will last until March the 31st and it works for um, it works only for my digital for stamps and as, as, as you already know, I have so many available in my Etsy shop. And there is another important thing that I want to tell you about my faux stamps, because I realized that um, people who bought my faux stamps on Etsy didn't realize that in the description I have made, uh, I have put the link to an unlisted video in which I show tips and tricks on how to get the best results with my faux stamps. So there are many to choose from. The promotional code is going to be um, available until uh, March the 31st. So once again, the promotional code is Arteo40 to get a 40% discount. And that's it. So. Now, let's go play with some watercolor paper and with some chemicals and let's develop this beautiful picture and I hope you will enjoy this fascinating process. So here we are. Now the environment is very dark because it is night and I am using a very low artificial light because now we are going to play with the two components and these components once they are together, they immediately become light sensitive. So make sure that you are in a dark place uh, and that you are not exposing anything to the sun. So I have a watercolor paper which is an A4 size, um, 300 grams, and as you can see, this paper is very very sturdy and it has to be very sturdy because there is going to be a lot of water involved in this process. So all you have to do is to decide what your style is going to be because if you want a very neat and precise line you can put some artist tape or just like I do in my case, I use a very, very uh, old brush because I like the brush strokes um, to be very, very visible, um, even because this reminds me of very old pictures too. So what we have to do now is to put together these two components, part A and part B, and the only difficulties in doing this is that we have to be very precise in measuring them and I am going to use um, this medicine cap which has notches right here and I think I am going with 4 milli um, milliliters of part A 
and 4 milliliters of part B and I'm going to put them together in this little container. So part A is here. And part B is here. Okay. Now we make this solution get together and we can start playing with the paper. So you can take any kind of brush you want. You can use a brayer, you can use a very soft brush and I am using this brush. It has very hard bristles and it's going to give me very, very irregular strokes. So, you're going to get the solution to have this um, lime color. It's a little yellow, it's a little green. And when you will expose it to light, you will know that the process has started because it's going to change the color basically immediately. So, what I want to do is to make sure that my brush strokes are very visible and also that I put this solution in every direction because this paper, it is a watercolor paper and it's very, very hard and I want the solution to get very well inside of the fibers of the paper. The only thing that I have to say is that if you realize that you put too much product and you see puddles somewhere, um, you have to get rid of them, so keep spreading it evenly all over the surface and get rid of any puddles that may get into your way. Very irregular and very beautiful. So this is the first sheet. We set this aside to dry. You can use a hair dryer or whatever you have available, but make sure that you're not going to expose this to sunlight before you are ready. As you can see, it takes a very, very small amount of product to have your A4 size sheet of paper completely covered. And that's going to be beautiful. So I have used um, only 8 milliliters of these entire products, which is 4 milliliters of part A and 4 milliliters of part B, and I have covered 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5 A4 size sheets. And uh, uh, so, as you can see, you don't need a lot of this product. And now we let this, um, this paper dry in a very, very dark place. And in the meantime, we can prepare our digital negative. Okay, so this is the negative image I will be uh, working with. Uh, as you can see, I have printed it on an acetate uh, um, sheet. And uh, uh, this is how I did it. I took the original image and it is uh, a photograph that I took some years ago. And this is the original. Then I added some sharpness to it. And then I added some um, contrast to it. Then I made it in black and white and I flipped it and I turned it into a negative. And then I printed it. So this is what 
we are going to work with and now we are ready to make our um, sandwich. So here we are again in a dark room and now I am going to use uh, a couple of glass sheets that I have taken from one of my uh, frames. So I put the first layer down, then I take one of our um, paper colors, sheets, and I put my negative picture on it and I make sure that everything fits perfect. Okay. And I put the second glass on top of it so that I have my sandwich. And now I can clamp everything to make sure that everything is going to stay in place and we are placing everything in the sun of course I have been so lucky because I have decided to make this video today morning when there was a beautiful sun and now it's cloudy so instead of 10 minutes I think I am going to leave this uh, glass sandwich uh, in daylight for half an hour or something more. So let's go and see what happens. So this is what we have. We are on my balcony right now and I am going to let this picture sit right here for half an hour or even a little more. So we are back indoors now and as you can see I am unclamping the frame and I am working on the sink because now it's time to develop our picture and there we go we let it in the sink and we are going to let the water run on it And I'm going to show you what happens if we add some, um, I don't know how to call this in English, it is hydrogen peroxide, I guess, which is going to oxidize our picture and it will make the blue even more intense. I hope that you can see how strong and how quick the reaction is actually just a few drops of it are enough just look at how blue a beautiful Prussian blue we got and we rinse it again and this is our old looking picture and I want to make it look even older, so I am going to dip it in tea. So now I have my very, very strong black tea in this oven pan. And I take my picture, which is still wet from the sink. And I'm going to place it face down in the tea. And what is really oh sorry and what is really important is that you keep on moving the tea from time to time so that the tannic acid that um, is naturally contained in the tea will get stuck to to the blue and it may replace the blue making the image totally different and uh, um, everything depends on how much time you're going to leave your picture inside of this um, particular bath. But what I found that is really important is that from time to time you keep on moving the tea so that the picture doesn't stand still. 
So I think I'm going to leave it as it is for half an hour or so and then we will see what happens. So back to the sink again and now we are going to rinse the tea away from this print and we are going to let it dry. And here we have it. Isn't it beautiful? It looks very, very, very old, but I made it five minutes ago. So I hope you enjoyed this process and I know it was very basic and there are a million things that I should have done and that I didn't do. There are another million things that I could have done and that I didn't do, but I hope you had fun watching me do this very, very old new picture. And uh, uh, don't forget to visit my Etsy shop and don't forget that the promo code ARTEO40 is going to be uh, available until March the 31st on any set of faux stamp that you may want to buy. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for spending some of your time with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you very, very soon. Thank you so much again. Bye bye.